Hello everybody, welcome back to Chef Plays, and today we are doing a top 10, we haven't done one in a while, and today's top 10 is games I wish I could play again for the first time, I just, oh man, and this isn't to be confused with like, top 10 games of all time in my opinion, these are just ones that I really wish I could go back and experience for the first time again, like, like, as if I'd never heard of them, and just got that chance. Number 10, we have Pokemon on the Game Boy SP. Doesn't matter which one. These games I spent so much time on as a child, that to be able to go back and play them again for the first time, or even to play them again on an SP, would be, like, legendary. Like, that, the amount of time that would take out of my life, <laughs> like, almost immediately would be nuts. Number 9, Minecraft PS3 or 360. Specifically, the launch versions. There is a reason I refuse to let my Minecraft PS3 update. <laughs> and I just... It's such... When you play that game for the first time, it is very... Different. Very new. It was the first of that type of survival genre that I ever played, and it's one the few that I still play consistently. Number eight, Dying Light One. I think the second one's okay, but the first one, man. Again, the amount of time that I have in that game, and I remember when I played it for the first time, I didn't realize how like heavy the environment set you up for the parkour, so I kept dying in the street, and like. But the more I played it, and the more I got to play it, and eventually bought it, it became such a core game to my library. Like, even though there's literally nothing I can do in it at this point, because I'm max legacy level, buggies maxed out, like, all side quests finished, there's nothing I can do. I still get on there just to run around and play and build blueprints. Seven. Smash Brothers. This one stands out a little bit on this list. But I just, I don't know. I remember the first Smash Brothers I played was Melee. And like, I was just so entranced in this game that was like, I used to be a huge Nintendo fan. Um, because when I was a kid, we had just the GameCube and the SNES. So. To see all my favorite characters just like fighting it out was such a wild thing to me. And like everybody's trying to clone it now so you can find it anywhere. But it just, I don't know, it was such a surreal experience. Number six, Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy. This is a game that is still unlike any other game I've played. It is very much its own thing. Very much sets itself apart and stands as its own. In a game I still speedrun to this day. Like, just because, even though I know it like the back of my hand, it's so different that when I'm tired of the games that I play consistently, like Call of Duty, God of War, all that, it's a very good fresh breath of fresh air. 5. Resident Evil 4. The original. First time I played this game by myself was in the Wii. And if you've been with the channel for a while, you'll know how highly regarded I hold this game. And it is one of my favorites of all time. And just, man, I remember playing through it the first time and just like being in awe of this thing. It's got dynamic difficulty. It's way different than the previous Resident Evils, which I still loved at the time. But this one, it felt special. And to this day, clearly, it is very special to a lot of people. Four, Twilight Princess. I remember the first time I played this game. And I just remember being so taken aback because the only Zelda games I'd played up to that point were the Bird's Eye View ones. I hadn't played Wind Waker, I hadn't played Ocarina. And it was just this dark, crazy, but subtly crazy world. And I just remember being like, any time that I got on the game, like being lost in the world. And it's still one I go back and play. I go back and play about seven of these. Like, consistently. <laughs> Three, 
the Bioshock series. All of them. Especially now with Judas being announced, Bioshock 4 in the works, the Bioshock Netflix thing, whether movie, TV, I don't really know. But it just really got me back into it. I can't tell you how many times I've beaten the first two. I've beaten Infinite a couple times, but I, I, that's more like I play a lot of Clash in the Clouds when I do that one, which is like a survival mode-ish. But it's just, again, it's one of those series that sets itself apart so much. Like, it was a spiritual successor to System Shock, but it just, I don't know, it's so good. And the story is, especially in the first game, is so gripping in a way. Two, The Last of Us, one mainly, but two-ish. Uh, the first Last of Us game, when I played that game, I didn't... I didn't beat it in one sitting, but I beat it pretty quick, and it just, it was the very first video game to make me cry, make me emotional, and one of the first games that I really found myself connected to, and just legitimately, like, anybody who hasn't played those games, because it's crazy that when you become such a big fan of things like this, you realize how many people haven't or don't, and you just you want them to because it's so good and it's not too difficult and I feel like the it started to hit that era where loading from like cutscene to gameplay was super smooth um, on the PS3 version not so much but once you hit PS4 and now The Last of Us Part 1 it's just very fluid and it's amazing one the God of War series as a whole Every single one of them. <laughs> this is my favorite. Like, uh, I, I can't explain how much I love this series. And it, it's nuts. Like, people from an outside perspective, they'll see this one and like, or especially the classics and just think it's another hack and slash, you know, blood fest. But the story for God of War is so tragic and so upsetting from so many angles especially when you play through all of them the only one i have not played is betrayal but i'm sure i would love it is and i just especially you get the psp ones and even ascension which is weird that now i'm seeing a lot more people stand up for because i remember i bought the game i bought ascension in 2018 i think and I just remember back then everyone being like, don't buy it, it's not worth your time, not worth your money. But I love that one. And just, I don't know, Kratos' story is one that I could talk about and replay and re-go through numerous times. I just beat the Valhalla DC on Ragnarok, and right before recording this video, hooked up my PS3 because I'm going to start going through the series again. Because it's just so good. And I would love for them to do a remake or remaster the original trilogy in the style of, like, the Insane Trilogy and the um, Reignited. Like, they wouldn't, even if they just made it look pretty, didn't change a thing other than that. Totally fine. I wouldn't even, I would full price right then and there. And I just, uh, I saw a lot of people saying for, like, Chains of Olympus and Ghost of Sparta and Ascension... They could just fill all that stuff into the first game. But I think it's important in a way that they're their own games. Um, I think you could probably pull it off with the Ghost of Sparta and Chains of Olympus only because they are like two hours long at max. But yeah, that's my list for top ten games I wish I could replay. And if you haven't, I recommend every single one of these. Some are for story, some are for purely gameplay. But I just, I, I wish I could do that. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed. Hope you're having a good day. If you're watching early on, have a good rest of your day. I'll see you in the next one. And until then, just keep enjoying those games for the first time that you haven't. So good. So many options. So many video games these days. Uh, an honorable mention, this is purely a gameplay one, is Ghost Runner. That game is wildly fun. 
and it's difficult, but it's so much fun, and like, I, I just, I don't know, that one's very new compared to a lot of these, but it just, that game is wild, like, it's a fast-paced, crazy experience, but, uh, yeah, see ya.